Well, hello everyone, Dr. B here. It was wonderful getting to know you, and I hope you enjoyed getting to know each other this week, and I look forward to seeing everybody's why videos. Well, I'm sure you've heard on more than one occasion that you should never judge a book by its cover, or in other words, don't judge someone or something by its appearance. Well, no doubt that's a noble goal, but you've probably observed and likely experienced that it's one that's rarely met especially in business and in everyday life where people are always sizing each other up and first impressions are really everything and i do mean everything within the first one thousandth of a second of meeting you those on the receiving end will have already started clicking off judgments about you within seven seconds it's believed that they're trying to determine whether they like you and if they trust you if you appear confident and qualified and if they decide within that time frame that they can, in fact, trust you and like you, then they'll spend the next 30 to 60 seconds going through a kind of critical laundry list in their heads about you. Do you have command of your subject? Are you ready for that upcoming promotion? Or maybe are you even competent? And remember, it's never too late to make a bad impression, even on someone who already knows and likes you. If you're entering a meeting with a scowl on your face, if your colleagues might wonder if you just heard some bad news or maybe even some work-related news, and with each interaction, they'll continually assess you and try to determine more value. So they're reading all those non-verbals and body language and facial expressions that you make. So that's why it's really important to understand better ways to handle criticism and maybe to avoid it in the first place by paying careful attention to how you're coming across to others and I also think that's why it's so important to know your why and be able to articulate it well i believe we talked about it in the last module that it's been said that to live a life that matters one needs to know what matters in their life that's why the why is all about being able to clearly articulate why you do what you do well well, this week we're going to continue to learn a little bit more about ourselves and to do some assessments that really begin that self-discovery and a more self-awareness about who we are and why we do what we do. I like this quote that you see on the screen by Jean-Paul Sartre. To be your all, you must be something in particular. Self-discovery is more about knowing who you are and being able to share the real you with others. Leadership is really about influencing, and to be an influencer, you need to lead from the inside out. It's been said that before you can lead others, you need to be able to lead yourself. That identity of you shapes your leadership and how you go about things. It's essential to remain humble and realize that it's not about you, really. It's really about serving others. Self-discovery is not a one-and-done exercise. It's really an ongoing process, and it should become a habit. You may have completed personality assessments like the Myers-Briggs, or also known as MBTI, and then there's other assessments like DISC, Four Lenses, and all sorts of assessments that you can do to, to learn more about your temperament and personality and learning styles and that sort of thing. But there's folks out there like Brad Lumenick who recommend that every couple of years you should be doing a variety of these self-assessments. I personally believe, and it's been my own experience, that as you complete these different self-assessments, you look at what stands out from each one and see where there's a correlation or maybe an overlap so that you begin to identify a little more about who you are, what you're good at, what you're strong in, and maybe some areas you could work on to improve. We're not trying to change who we are at our core, but if you can identify some areas that you could be more aware of it helps you to better relate with others well this week we're going to do that we're going to look at a couple of assessments that should help with that continued development process so let's walk through the module this week and just make sure you know where everything's at and understand everything that we're going to do so that the objectives we're working towards which are identifying your leadership strengths and weaknesses identifying your character strengths and then reflecting on how you will make self-awareness a habit so that we can meet those objectives this week. And again, with each module, we're going to have a lecture. We're doing it right now. Readings, discussion, assignment, 
and then the review and reflect. So the lecture we're doing right now, but I have a little image on this screen that's really about what we're doing this week, and that's pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zone. Comfort zone is where we feel safe, we're in control, maybe we like the status quo or we're comfortable with the way things are, but to get to the growth zone, sometimes we have to go through these other zones, the fear zone. That may be where you lack some self-confidence. You make excuses about learning more about who you are. And at that point, you can be affected by others' opinions. The learning zone, we begin to deal with challenges and problems. We acquire new skills. We begin to extend the comfort zone. It begins to move out. And when we get in that growth zone, that's when we're discovering our purpose, our why. We begin to live our dreams. We can set new goals. And then we begin to conquer objectives. The readings this week are pretty short and quick, but there are links provided for you there where you can open those, and then within those articles themselves, you can go and dig a little deeper. But they cover the content of self-awareness and self-motivation for you as a leader. And I want to remind you, as we move into these further modules, your challenge with finding an article, blog, website, some resource that's related to the topic that week. So this week on self-awareness, self-motivation, self-discovery, and you will utilize that in the discussion. For the discussion this week, I want you to answer these questions initially to wrestle with this idea of making self-discovery a habit and how you will be intentional about continually learning about yourself and then anything else that stood out to you in the readings this week. And again, I want to remind you, you're expected to find an article, blog, website, some sort of resource that's related to the topic, and reference it in your posts this week and in future weeks moving forward. And it can be used to support and align with what you've already read and, and to continue that thought, or maybe challenge some of the things you read and challenge your thoughts in this week's readings. But I want you to find that article or resource. My goal is that the discussion should be really more of you and you guys having dialogue amongst each other and less of me. And I mentioned this in an announcement I sent out, but I, I, I don't want it to be a situation where I influence the discussion early on. I may make comments later, but I don't want it to even feel artificial where I'm having to respond to everybody's pose. And you're, way to go. Yeah, that's a good thought rather than me being able to add insight or maybe I'll post a question or challenge something a little bit just to kind of nudge the dialogue a little bit. But it's critical that you post your initial post on time so that other folks in the class have a chance to respond to their two posts. And I want you to continue on. I don't want it to be, all right, I did my post. I've posted a couple responses to classmates and that's it. The idea is that this fosters that dialogue that would happen in a classroom where you would have readings and you'd come back in and we would we would all have some good rich discussion together so continue to refer back to it even after you've made your initial post and you've responded to two others all right for the assignment this week you're going to complete a teacher leadership and character strength self-assessment and you're going to reflect on what you learned about yourself for this assignment to be beneficial to you and your leadership development growth, you must be willing to dig beneath the surface, dig a little deeper in order to learn who you are. Don't take uh, assessments at any time thinking about what you want to be like. Try to really answer it as you are. Try to remove yourself from any particular roles, your role as a student, as a parent, as a teacher. Really at the core of who you are and that'll really help you identify areas that you're good at and areas you might need to develop further. So this first one is a teacher leadership and self-assessment. So if you click on the little icon there it will open inside of Canvas but you'll want to download this because I want you to download this assessment and then complete it and then you're going to submit it back. So as you scroll down, you'll see contents. You can read all of the introduction and information. And you're going to see that there are four domains that they're really going to focus on. Collaboration, communication, professional learning and growth, 
instructional leadership, and school community and advocacy. And for each one of the areas, you'll be rating yourself for not evident, beginning, developing, or advancing. And you'll be able to read more about that description when you take it. But here's an example. Let's scroll over a little bit. So you'll read about this competency, 1.1.1, and then you'll rate yourself. And you should be able to click on it and for those four different ratings. And you'll do that for each one. And then as you complete it, you'll be able to record some information in evidence and then next step. So evidence is where you would maybe record some behaviors, attributes, experiences, the reason why you rated yourself as you did. And then next steps are areas where you're going to challenge yourself for growth. So this is what I'm going to do next um, as, I, as I grow and develop in certain areas. And you'll do that for each one of those areas. And again, download that. The Character Strengths is a really good one. It's free. If you have options where you need to pay anything, do not. Select all the free options. And you'll open that up, complete it online, and then they should email you back the results. Or you may be able to screen capture the results. And I want you to name those when you submit them as my example. So I use my last name, underscore, teacher leadership, and so forth. And then for the character strengths, uh, last name underscore via character strengths. And then after you complete those and you've shared those, I want everyone to answer question one below here. Are there any surprises in the results? If so, do you think the results are accurate? So just sharing about what your takeaways were from doing the assessments. And then I want you to pick at least two other questions of your choosing. So there are eight other questions. You can pick two of them. You can answer more, but I'm giving you some options there. So pick ones that maybe more resonate with you, that you want to expand on some more, and then complete that and submit that as well. For the rubric this week, I went with a simple approach again. I basically just want you to really self-reflect and work on your self-awareness and learning more about who you are and who you're becoming as a leader and your ability to lead others. So I want you to understand that I'm going to grade the fact that you completed both assessments thoroughly. So 30 points for each assessment. And then the third part is using the three questions to reflect upon the assessments and your self-development, 20%, uh, 20 points. And then fourth, the interpretation of responses. So I want to see that there's at least one reference to the ideas of leadership and self-awareness. So the readings and other things you've discovered, making those connections. So we'll make sure you get those submitted. And then finally, as is going to be the case with each week, you will reflect back over the week and review the materials, the self-assessments, the discussions you had. And then I want you in your blog to label a blog post as module to reflection and then what was your biggest takeaway this week maybe there was an aha moment or biggest epiphany and then what did you learn about yourself and others in the class maybe something someone else said or posted really impacted you maybe they shared something maybe it was an article they shared so that's the two parts we'll have each week your biggest takeaway what did you learn about yourself and others and looking ahead, you will be considering what you've learned about yourself, and then you'll be setting personal and professional goals. So I look forward to learning what you learned about yourself this week. I hope you have a great week, and please remember to email me with any questions or concerns.